All right, y'all. If y'all want to ever, if y'all ever wanted to know um, how much money has this country given to Ukraine, uh, we're about to find out. This report here is from the BBC, um, and it says how much has the United States given to Ukraine? As you can see, Joe Biden and Zelensky. U.S. President Joe Biden announced nearly half a billion more dollars of U.S. military aid to Ukraine during a surprise visit to Kiev this week. That's on top of billions the U.S. has already spent on Ukraine's conflict with Russia. Congress approved, uh, excuse me, Congress appropriated more than one hundred and twelve billion in 2022 alone. The U.S. is the largest contributor to Ukraine in terms of money spent. But a year into Russia's invasion, some Americans are wondering where the money goes and if the aid is worth the cost. You think? Before Mr. Biden's pledge in Ukraine this week, the U.S. had committed nearly 80 billion in aid to Ukraine. That's according to the Kiel Institute for the World Economy, which tracks global spending on aid to Ukraine. Some 46.6 billion of the U.S. commitment is military aid, far more money than any other country is donating. The UK comes second with 5.1 billion in military aid, followed by the EU with 3.3 billion. And that's just military aid. However, other kinds of aid add to the cost. And as you can see, we're number one. I guess we ought to be proud of that, huh? Not. Military aid pays for drones, tanks, missiles, and other munition systems, as well as training, logistics, and intelligence support. Humanitarian and financial aid are extra. Humanitarian aid includes food assistance, safe drinking water. Well, forget about East Palestine, huh? Yeah, forget about, you know, our, our nation over here, states and cities that, you know, still have water issues, Flint, um, Mississippi, like I said, Ohio, you know, forget about us. But our tax dollars are, are, are being spent paying for other people's wars. But let's continue. Financial aid is economic. It keeps Ukraine's government operating by paying civil servants, <laughs> healthcare workers, and educators. Military aid accounts for more than half of the U.S. spending on Ukraine, leaving $3.96 billion committed to humanitarian aid and $26.73 billion in financial aid. What are other nations spending on Ukraine? The U.S. is not the biggest spender when commitments are ranked as a percentage of gross domestic product. Estonia tops the chart with a pledge of 1.1 of its GDP. The Kiel Institute says the U.S., on the other hand, is pledging just 0.4% of its GDP. Yeah, how much money is this? How much money is that? Money continues to pour into the conflict from all over the world, with the U.S. leading the way. Yet the price tag is still far lower than previous conflicts, the Kiel Institute, a German research institute, notes. The United States, for example, spent more than three times as much per year compared to their expenses in the Afghanistan war in 2011, Kiel says. Germany committed more than three times as much to allies in the Gulf War of 1990 to 91 compared to what is committed to Ukraine. I guess my question is, why is Joe Biden breaking his neck to give our money, your tax dollars, and mine to a country that basically, I mean, why, why, why are we there by proxy? Why, why are we spending billions of dollars, billions, over $112 billion? You see that right there? Look at that paragraph. That's on top of the billions the U.S. has already spent in Ukraine's conflict with Russia. Congress has appropriated more than $112 billion in 2022 alone. Yeah, it seems like it's time to get rid of some Congress people, right? I'm just saying. But again, my question is, why is Joe Biden so hell-bent on 
supporting Ukraine. Just in case we forgot about this, in 2018, y'all remember this story? Check this out. I remember going over convincing our team, our <coughs> others, to convincing us that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev, and, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion-dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to press conference. Said, "Nah." I said, "I'm not going to. We're, we're not going to give you the billion dollars." Just like that, just like that. This is in 2018 when he was, you know, uh, VP. They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said, call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. I mean, this is, this is the type of corruption a lot of us are talking about. But again, this man... Uh, who some of you all have voted for is it seems like whatever he touches he destroys what, whatever he has is puts his hands to he, he he makes nothing good out of it and some of you all voted for this guy in light of all the scandals and all the corruption and all the lies that this man has told and besides him being a racist some of you professing Christians voted for this guy but Needless to say, my, my question is simply this. Do you believe that the United States, that we should still be supporting and giving our money to Ukraine? Whatever happened to America first is my question. Whatever happened to our values? Whatever happened to us taking care of people here in this country? In this country? God knows we have homelessness we have so many things that we can do to take care of our own citizens, especially those of us who pay our taxes and, and those of us who work hard for a living. Um, we would love to have the monies that we have been spending in taxes to go back to us. I mean, after all, we paid for it. We're paying for it now. But for some of you who don't think that policies matter and people that are put in positions of power doesn't matter, we're having a reality check right now and a rude awakening at that but let me know what you think in the comments below i'm trying to see something